This is Russ Anderson with another tutorial on moving object tracking. In this tutorial, I'm going to show how to match move an existing mesh into a shot. So I'm going to start out opening up our shot, and this is going to be this truck driving by again. And we're going to do this a bit differently than the other tutorial. We're going to start out again setting this up as a moving object shot, but at this point I'm going to go over to the quad view and create a mesh. And in, in this case we're just going to use a box for the back part of the truck. Uh, at this point I would uh, normally, uh, if you had an existing mesh, you'd uh, just read in that uh, OBJ mesh. But uh, here we're just going to just use a box here, and in this case, we have some existing sizes for it that we've gotten previously. So we're just going to crank those in so the box has the right uh, aspect ratio, and uh, effectively we're setting the size as well. So now we have our box, and we're just going to position it a little uh, relative to the null that represents the moving object itself. And that position of the mesh versus that null is going to be maintained later throughout the tracking process. So now we're ready to go and start doing the actual tracking. We'll just uh, stop showing the meshes here. And again, we're going to just set up some simple uh, tracking. We're going to actually be tracking the corners of the actual truck here as I mangle things up a bit. Um, so we're going to start out and we're just going to track these corners We're going to later make these correspond to the corners of the, uh, the truck mesh that we created. You can see I just worked through and set up some trackers here quickly. And at this point, I'm going to cut away and complete this process, and I'll be back in a second. Now we have a set of trackers that extend throughout the length of the shot. And we're ready to link up these trackers with their corresponding positions on the mesh. So to do that, we're going to switch to the perspective view and lock the uh, camera to the... Uh, you know, the perspective views camera to the actual camera so that we can see what's going on. And to make this a little easier to do, we're going to select the object. That's just the null. We're just going to rotate it around a little bit so that it's easier to see what, what's going to go with what. Okay. Now we're going to switch the perspective view into the place mode which moves objects around on the surface of meshes. In this case, what we're going to do is take each tracker and make it a seed point, which then gives us a way to adjust the settings for what, that, what coordinates that particular tracker is going to be locked to. One other thing that's handy to do is just to uh, switch the mesh to a uh, wireframe view. The, the little seed points, uh, th this just makes it easier to see them generally. So uh, now we're ready to start doing our place. There's a little, little red seed point 
it's moving around on the surface of the mesh. Um, I'll just turn that back on for a second. You can see it's kind of sitting on the surface and the, the reason I make them clear is just so that when you're up on the top of things you can actually still see part of it. Now what we want to do here actually is hold down the control key and when we do that the little seed point is going to snap to the nearest vertex of the mesh. So we're going to repeat this process for each of the individual trackers and just smack it onto the corresponding part, part of the mesh. You know, if you have a more complicated a head model, uh, for example, you'd be doing exactly the same thing. You have some, uh, you know, match an eye tracker to the right corner of an eye, etc. There we go, we have all the trackers locked, uh, hopefully, uh, we have them all set up as seeds. And um, the other thing that we want to do is uh, make them all locks. So the seeding is used sort of to start out the solving process, and the lock is, is used once the uh, solve is actually completed a bit. Okay, so now we have things locked up, and let's just switch back to our quad view, and we'll show the mesh again. Now we should be ready to start up to solve. We want to disable the camera. The object is going to be sitting in from seed points mode. And we should also turn on the constraint button. So we want those uh, constraints for each point to be effective. So now we can go and hit the magic button. And real quick, we get a solution. And you have your mesh locked up to the truck and you can see here's the null moving along the path in that top view with everything else following along and you notice that the the way that I positioned the mesh uh, initially uh, the, the null is actually on this back bottom left uh, corner here so that, that was just kind of an arbitrary uh, choice but uh, here we have our uh, completed match. And the beauty of this process is that because you have an existing mesh to work with, it's a much more robust sort of process, even if there isn't very much perspective shift in the shot to start with. The presence of the mesh lets you deal with shots that uh, don't really exhibit any uh, shift at all, that are essentially tripodish sorts of shots and, and still get a full 3D solution out of it. So this is a really uh, very robust way to handle these sort of shots when you have a uh, known existing mesh that you can work with and that place mode or the perspective window lets you position things nicely onto the mesh to get the coordinates that you need to make this process work. Thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed the show.